Our second reading is from Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 10. Consequently, when Christ came into the world, he said, Sacrifices and offerings you have not desired, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and in sin offerings, you have taken no pleasure. Then I said, See God, I have come to do your will, O God. In the scroll of the book it is written of me. When he said above, You have neither desired nor taken pleasure in sacrifices and offerings and burnt offerings and sin offerings. These are offered according to the law. Then he added, See, I have come to do your will. He abolishes the first in order to establish the second. And it is by God's will that we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to the Judean country, to the Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leapt in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud voice, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leapt for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what has, was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arms. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and set the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. Well, grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Can you be confident in the present about the future, that you speak about it as if it was the past? Especially if your present was a little tenuous? I'll, I'll ask that again. Can you be confident in the present about the future that you speak about it as if it's the past? Again, it's a little confusing, but this is what the Magnificat does. And I'll get to that in a second, because I actually think that that not only is this what Mary does in her song, but I actually think our gospel reading is perfect for this fourth Sunday in Advent and kind of as we are ending 2021. And I think so for a couple of reasons. And first to recap, very similar to what Mary Ellen just did, you know, the angel came to Mary and said she was going to have a baby uh, by the Holy Spirit. And even her cousin Elizabeth in her old age was six months pregnant because nothing is impossible with God. And, and at the start of the reading, Mary, and I always have drawn my attention to this, Mary went with haste. Like she split town pretty quickly. And she goes to the Judean uh, town in the hill country to see Elizabeth. And maybe she went to verify the angel's message that Elizabeth was pregnant uh, wanted to verify herself, or maybe she left her small town in search of cover before word got out that she was pregnant and not by her betrothed. Now, I can't necessarily imagine what was going through Mary's mind when she was traveling to her cousin's house, but she had plenty of time with those thoughts because as she was walking, she had to walk 90 miles and had an elevation gain for you hikers of over 1,300 feet. 
So she had a lot of time to walk, and it was an arduous journey. But we do know that when she arrived, Elizabeth greets her with a blessing, and it's only after this blessing that Mary is able to sing. Just think about that. This is huge. When Elizabeth receives the news she is pregnant, yes, it was received with disbelief, but also with joy. But when Mary received the news of her pregnancy, yeah, it was received with disbelief. But then she skipped town. So maybe not with joy. It's only after receiving the blessing from Elizabeth that Mary is able to sing words like, my soul magnifies the Lord, which is where we get the name Magnificat from. And she is able to say, surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed. And the mighty one has done great things for me. Before Elizabeth's blessings, I don't know that Mary would have been able to sing rather speak such words. This leads me to the first reason why I think this reading is perfect for as we close 2021, or as we're getting close to it. Because can we just, I mean, honestly, can we, can we take a moment to admit the fact that these last years have been hard? Can we admit the fact that 2021 has been hard Harder than we probably would have expected. Can we admit that we thought or, or we hoped that we would have been out of this by now? Can we admit this? Can we also admit that many of us are beyond done at this point? That there is only so long you can be pressed down and weighed down before you can't take it anymore and you just want to be done. Where you just don't have the energy to care anymore. Can we admit, as someone who told me a couple days ago, that it's like we're trying to get to the light at the end of the tunnel while running on a treadmill. In these times... In these times when there is less light and more dark, in these times of stress and anxiety, we need each other more than ever. We need people to celebrate for us at times. We are all carrying stress and anxiety and frustration. And no matter who you are or where you are at this moment, all of us are truly doing the best we can. And sometimes all we need, what we need, is to receive a blessing from someone else. Please especially this time of year and in the months ahead, don't underestimate the simple power of presence. Because when I read this story, I can't help but also feel that Mary's song would not have happened without Elizabeth. That Mary would not have been able to say that God has looked with favor on her lowliness or her humiliation, which is another translation of his servant. But then Mary does something amazing then in her song. After getting the strength from Elizabeth in verses 51 to 53, she speaks about the future work of God as if it's the past. He has shown strength with his arms. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful in their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. I mean, remember, Mary is still pregnant. And Jesus isn't born yet. And besides that, there's still 30 plus years before Jesus' ministry. To put it another way, Nothing's happened for her to sing these words in these songs. The amazing thing about this is that salvation is so assured 
that it is already as good as done before Jesus is even born. Mary can do this because she sees that it has already started with her. The great reversal that is salvation has already begun, and with God, nothing is impossible. God has scattered the proud and brought down the powerful because they're not the ones that are going to be bearing the Messiah. God has lifted up the lowly because she, the poor, unwed teenage girl from a backwoods town, is the one chosen by God to be the Christ bearer. And if you like Greek words, that's the Christotokos. She sees what is happening to her as emblematic of God's future salvation for all people. Because as I've said it before, salvation is not personal if it is not also communal. God's love for you is an outpouring of God's love for all people. God's grace for you is you feeling God's grace for all people. Because she is able to see God working in her life, she is able to confidently talk about God's future in the present as if it's the past, even when her situation seems tenuous. Or to put it another way, she is able to talk about the already, not yet, of reality. And this is the second reason I think this is a perfect reading for Advent 4 in the last days of 2021, because this already not yet is our current reality. We live not in the expectations of Jesus' birth, because that's already happened. We live in expectation of Jesus' second coming that has not yet happened. Jesus has already done his public ministry of teaching and preaching and healing. He has already died on the cross and been raised again and is already sitting at the right hand of God. And as we say in our communion liturgy, Jesus is risen, meaning he still is. And as our Hebrews reading ended, our second lesson ended, we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once and for all. That means once and for all, so that all your sins, the past, the present, and the future, have already been forgiven. So you don't need to sacrifice we don't need to sacrifice to God. We don't need to feel sorry. We need to celebrate what has already been done for us. We just haven't experienced it yet. But you also get that the world, obviously, is not as it should be. Right? I mean, we're still in a pandemic. We still have wars and famine. We still have racism and injustice and many other not right things. But one day, any day Jesus will return and make all things new. And so we look forward to the life of the world to come, as we say in the Nicene Creed. What Jesus has already done in the past has continuing effect for the future. And it's confidence in the past that gives us hope to act in the present while we wait for the future to arrive. So while we are still waiting for God's future, we can live as if it has already happened. So that's what everything we do as a church and as Christians, we are living out God's future today. Taking communion now is celebrating the reality of the universal banquet to come. Getting vaccinated and boosted, boosted is a present sign that the pandemic will one day be no more. Striving to be a blessing to those who do not feel blessed is a sign to them that they already are. I have to admit that I'm, this is very confusing. 
I told Mary Ellen, I told Linda that I'm going to be preaching a very confusing sermon. Because we don't get time this way. We don't get that the future has already happened. We're just waiting to get there. We don't get that God's grace is not pushing us. God's grace is pulling us into God's future. And so we actually can speak of future events, that light that we are trying to wait at the end of the tunnel. We can speak and we can act today as if it's already there, while, of course, taking precautions and live our lives for the future today. So though we are not there yet, God has already done great things. And the things God has done in your individual lives in the past are signs of what God is going to do for all people in the future. And if God has already done it in the past, God is doing it in the present And God will complete it in the future. So, to be even more confusing, it's already as good as done. 